Okay, after yet more disappointing experiences, seems like I'm gonna have to have a little chat about good manners when it comes to shenanigans. I've covered this before, but it seems like some of you bitches need a, a refresher. So, welcome to the experienced connoisseur's explainer of etiquette, where it relates to the unencumbered liaison. That is to say, welcome to one guide to hitting it and quitting it. Let's go! This is probably true. Please be aware that the following contains strong language and adult themes. It would be boring without them. And you might be thinking this is a little bit pointless. Surely, as a massive pile of tarts, and strumpets, we of the Elgibitaqua community already know how to do this and how to do this well. I'm sure we all have, at some point or other, enjoyed the odd smash and dash. And I don't like to slut shame, but some of you sluts need to step your game up. For some of you, the old pork and walk seems to be up there with a haircut or a dentist appointment. Something that you'd rather not have to deal with, but let's just get through it as quickly and efficiently as possible and then get on with our lives. Presumably because you're anxious to get back to the grind of late stage capitalism and the eventual cold embrace of death. Such fun. And that's my point, I think. Why make things more miserable than they have to be? There are plenty of ways to make even a brief ram and scram into something enjoyable. Possibly even fun, dare to dream. It doesn't have to be something that you get through as quickly as possible, gritting your teeth and trying not to make eye contact. You may only be there to tap that ass and hit the gas, but it can still be an enjoyable experience for everyone involved. First off, when it comes to any encounter, pump and dump or otherwise, be clear about what you are both expecting. Just because you've got your ankles in your hands and you're not making plans doesn't mean that anything goes. If you want things done a certain way or there's something that you don't want to do or you're not into, you've got two options. Either develop telepathy or, and this is a bit out there, speak your needs. Let everyone involved know what you like and what you don't. Shocking. This shouldn't be that much of a revelation, because we all get those messages on Grindr. What are you after? What are you into? Not everyone's looking for the same thing. And you don't have to be looking for the same thing every time. It doesn't always have to be up the bum and no harm done. Sometimes you just want someone to tickle your meat and hit the street. But unless you tell them that, they're not going to know that that's what you're after. And if someone else is after something that you're not bothered about or that turns you off, you don't have to be a dick about it or shut them down completely. Just be polite. Say something like, mm, I'm not in the mood for that today, thank you. Maybe another time. And then move on. Like, anyone who's going to be a dick about that kind of response is probably not someone you want to be shagging anyway. This is easier on the apps, of course. But even if you meet in a bar, you can have this conversation before you disappear behind the bins to shoot your goo and say adieu. Basically, be clear about what you want and what you don't. There's no need to choreograph every position or something like that. There's no jury awarding points for finesse. It can just be quick and nasty. But if you're in the mood to choke a daddy before deleting his addy, then that's something that the other guy needs to know too. Checking stuff beforehand includes condoms, by the way. Don't assume everyone's on prep, and don't assume just because they're on prep that they're going to be okay with you not using a condom. I've seen more than one fully grown man get dangerously close to having a full-on sulk because I wouldn't let him hit it raw before he headed out the door. And I can honestly say that getting dressed and leaving that whiny man baby right there was far more satisfying than the sex would have been. <laughs> so know what your deal breakers are and stick to them. And if you are hosting, shall we say, be a gracious host. When your opponent arrives, offer them a drink. What kind of drink you offer and whether or not they accept can give you a bit of a hint as to whether they're up for a bit of a chat or just down to drain their balls and hit the halls. Offering a glass of water should be just standard for everyone. Anything more complicated, like a hot drink or something from the cocktail trolley, if they accept something like that, then it's a good hint that they're 
down for a bit of chat before they ruin your sheets and hit the streets, because those things take longer to make and to drink. If you are looking to efficiently pleasure that tart and then depart, a good way to politely do that is to set boundaries. Say, hey, I'm on my lunch break, so I can come over, but I only really have about half an hour. Is that okay? And then if they say, yeah, that's fine, come on over, the door's on the latch, great. Or they might say, oh, that's not really long enough. And then at least you can set that boundary, and whether it's true or not, it doesn't matter. Maybe you end up having a lovely time and you want to stay longer, and you can say, oh, I'll just be late back to work. Ha 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 ha. Or if you're having a horrible time, just be like, oh, well, look at the time, I've got to get back early, and run away. Both good. And once you have danced the naked rumba without getting their number, if you're trying to extricate yourself from such a situation, there are a few ways to go about that too. If you're the host, you could just say, get out now, please. But you don't have to be quite so rude about it. A gentle way of hinting that it might be time to leave is to start asking them future-focused questions. Things like, so, what are you going to do with the rest of your day? And stuff like that. Because it kind of gently, subtly shuffles them towards the door. And not everyone is there just to smash that rear and disappear. Some people like to get to know who they're about to have sex with. They want a bit of social interaction and a bit of chat before they find out what your smell like. It can be easy to forget this, especially when you're burdened with the fiery loins. Sometimes all you can think about is scratching that itch and dumping that bitch. But do your best to remember that the other person is a person. There have been several conversations I've had on doorsteps that have gone along the lines of, Hi, how are- Oh god, you're keen! Which can be fun. But sex is always better when you're both on the same wavelength. It's a quick conversation to have. It's easy. It should be straightforward. If you're feeling a bit down and lonely, then there's nothing wrong with a quick peg it and leg it session to get the happy chemicals flowing. But if your partner can't be bothered to acknowledge you as a person while they shoot and scoot, you're probably going to come away feeling worse, not better. And probably sticky. It's also jarring to have to go the other way. I have more than once power walked my way to their house, foaming at the urethra, bashed down their front door with my throbbing boner, and then just had to sit on the sofa and have half an hour of delightful conversation with someone who wants a chat before I rearrange their guts. It's a bit of a gear change. It's the kind of gear change that, were it in an actual car, would catapult bits of your engine into oncoming traffic. And now you mention it, no, I don't know anything about cars. Moving on. Basically, it all comes down to manners and respect. Respecting the other person as a person and respecting yourself. For example, if there's no one you really fancy, don't just go with the least worst option. Respect yourself enough to just have a or put the app away, try again another day. It happens to all of us. Sometimes you might be feeling your oats and in the mood for a Greek god type person, but Grinder is a fickle mistress. She may decide that tonight, instead of beautifully chiseled statues come to life, all she's going to offer you is some waxworks that look like they were left too close to the heater. For example, a visiting hottie popped up on my grid. He was staying nearby, and I messaged him. He complained that he was bored and horny, and that there was no one hot enough nearby, asking me if there was somewhere he should go instead. I thought about saying, well, I'm always here, but I think it's a bad idea to try and convince someone to want to sleep with you. They either do or they don't, and it's probably best to just let that go. So I said, Probs just have a w then. Ah well. And then got on with my busy night of Star Trek and biscuits. A couple of hours later, he messaged me again, just straight up saying, So, do you want to come around and have a w with me? And I thought, eh, f it, why not? He's invited me. I am horny. Kind of want to see what his w looks like. So I tootled on over, and when I got there, he just seemed super bored and entirely uninterested in me. We sat down on opposite sides of the sofa in this dark Airbnb room with some playing on the big TV. He stared at the TV with his hand in his pants and I just kind of sat there awkwardly checking him out because he was quite fit. And there's always a moment of awkward silence, but this one went on a bit longer than usual. But he made no effort to move things along or 
even really acknowledge that I was there. I was beginning to wonder if I'd wandered into the wrong flat somehow. He was staring at the TV, I was checking him out, and that was it. So I asked him where he was from or how long he was staying or what he did for work or something like that. And without taking his eyes off the TV, he just went, Ugh, you're a talker. That actually happened. And that's when it clicked for me. He was resentful that the best he could do was me. Someone he didn't fancy and had no interest in, but had invited me around anyway. As if disliking me up close was better than just not bothering. Really wasn't, because he was all but resentful of me being there, and was making no effort to hide it whatsoever. It seemed like some kind of passive-aggressive sulk at Grinder or the universe in general, that I was the best that was on offer. A kind of, oh god, fine, if that's all there is, then I suppose it'll do, but I'm not going to enjoy it. He gave off very strong, would-be-rude-to-the-waitress vibes, and you can tell a lot about someone by how they treat people that they don't have to be polite to. It certainly felt like he considered me beneath him. Which, I wasn't getting beneath him. Not at all, thank you very much. I didn't stay long, funnily enough. I am no one's second choice. Never allow yourself to be someone else's consolation prize. If they are not enthusiastically saying, yes, please, all of that, in my face, thank you, then move on. They don't deserve you. If the best they can muster is, fine, you'll do, I'd stay away. Any f where was I? Oh, yes, how to sh and hit the road without being a massive d Again, a lot of this is just good manners, which I, as an English person, am obviously very knowledgeable about. And it's not just things like keeping a spare d rag next to the bed for guests, or remembering to keep your shoulders back and your chin up and your pinky out as you're noshing them off like a lady. My point is, remember that the other person is a person. Don't go into the whole thing with thoughts solely focusing on yourself. You're there because you're horny and want to eject and evacuate. As shocking as it may sound, the other person is trying to enjoy themselves too. They are not just sucking and moving along out of the goodness of their heart. For those who don't know, squeezing that and then leaving real quick does not count towards community service. That was a very awkward conversation with my parole officer. Basically, what I'm saying is, treat them with respect, treat yourself with respect. Do your best to make sure that everyone involved gets what they want out of the encounter. You don't need to be like two English gentlemen stuck in a doorway going, after you, oh no no, after you, oh but I insist, no no, oh you first, please. All I'm saying is, if you go through the door first, make sure you're holding it open for the person who isn't there yet. Don't cream that eclair and get out of there without at least trying to make the other person's toes curl too. It all comes down to not treating a fellow human being as the sexual equivalent of Uber Eats. If all you're after is making it splatter without all that natter, then cut out the middleman entirely. Treat yourself to a specialist implement and go to town on yourself. It's very unlikely that anyone else is going to be able to do it as well as you could do it yourself. And then there's absolutely zero small talk. You make it spray and then you pack it away. And if that's not exciting enough for you, then, I don't know, tape it to the top of a Roomba and chase it round the living room. That was Probably True, the LGBTQ plus storytelling project created to remind all of our queer siblings that we are none of us alone. If you liked it, then comment, share, subscribe and join the Patreon. Or just tell all your friends. If you didn't like it, tell me. Come at me, bro.